after WikiLeaks went one step too far. Companies like Amazon.com and MasterCard were prepared to support the whistleblower website up to a point, and now they're gone. But were they pushed, goaded into it perhaps by an angry U.S. government? We may never find out for certain. But Richard Falkenrath has a good sense of what's really going on behind the scenes. He was Deputy Homeland Security Advisor to President George W. Bush. Richard is now a principal at the Chertoff Group and a contributing editor here at Bloomberg. Richard, what do you think? Were they pushed into it by the government? Was the government involved in any way here? Well, the government is investigating a criminal violation. And they have a, the Attorney General has said this. And my sense is that these companies began to field some inquiries from the FBI, and they didn't like those questions. And so that led them to take these decisions. They, they've all said the government did not ask them to do this. They did not order them to do it. But they, they know they're being investigated, or at least the mechanism by which the money and the information is moving is being investigated. And that, I think, uh, came to their attention. And we should believe it when they say that they weren't told to do it by the government. Yeah, yeah I think you should. There's, they have no reason to lie uh, in this case. In fact, they could get in some trouble down the road with their shareholders if they did lie. So this is the equivalent in the corporate world of libel chill, effectively. A bit. Uh, and, and this is very different from when the government tries to enact prior restraint on the press. This is a private company who is providing a service that no one is really entitled to and deciding to withhold it for whatever reason and make sense in their own corporate context. Doesn't this set a dangerous precedent? Look, I, I know you're not a free speech lawyer, but if, if Amazon.com, if PayPal, if a MasterCard is prepared to abandon WikiLeaks in such a short space of time, what's to stop them from abandoning, say, the New York Times because David Sanger writes a story that happens to be critical of the Bush, of, of the, pardon me, the Obama administration and its approach, say, to Afghanistan? They very well could do that. Uh, I personally am not particularly troubled by it. The information is still out there, and I think there's a big difference from when a private company does it to when the government does it. And the private company is acting according to its own interests. The government has various constitutional restrictions on what it can do with the press. Private companies are up to, they get to do what they want. What, you know, what would you do in this situation? You're a former advisor to the President of the United States, so you understand the tensions at work here. Now you work for uh, a private company that wrestles with these kinds of questions. Do you think that Amazon.com, MasterCard, etc., took the right course of action? Well, uh, probably, but it's hard to second guess these decisions made in the boardroom. In the case of Amazon, they were being uh, challenged by name by Senator Lieberman from the Hill. And so they began to feel some pressure from the legislative branch, not the executive branch. And they sort of said, look, this operation is too notorious. These, these materials may be stolen. They may be illegally acquired. We don't want to be part of this anymore. Uh, but they're not really parties to the crime, are they? They didn't aid and abet the publication of these documents. Well, look, if you're EPA, if you're EPA, eBay, you don't want to be part of the sale of stolen merchandise. So if you're selling cars, you're not going to be selling stolen cars. So this is information which presumably has been stolen. It's not supposed to be out there. And they're making a decision. We don't want to be a part of this operation. And I think that's entirely understandable. There are a lot of people, yes, understandable for certain, but there are a lot of people out there who would like to see companies like the ones that we've been naming stand up to this kind of pressure say free speech is important stolen or not it's it's you know this is what american democracy is supposed to be all about is there going to be a time when a discussion of a, a, a more full and complete discussion is held between people say at the white house uh, say secretary of state hillary clinton and corporate america over these issues there will be and i think there will be hearings on this this is a very big deal right now congress is between sessions my guess is in the next congress a number of committee chairmen are going to want to uh, attract attention to exactly these issues let's talk for a moment about mastercard because it's an excuse for us to show everybody what's going on with the website as you probably heard there was a denial a distributed denial of service attack on MasterCard today, organized by a group called 4chan. This is according to TechCrunch and the BBC. You can see what's happening here. Nobody can get into the MasterCard site. We've been trying. Is this the kind of payback that you'd expect, the friends of Julian Assange and WikiLeaks springing to its defense. Yes, exactly. So, I mean, it shows that these decisions by these companies are not cost-free. There are consequences. They will get this under control, I think, in relatively short order. This is a very basic di distributed denial of service attack. Hopefully, they'll have this site back up and running pretty soon. All right. Richard, it's always good to have you here. Our friend and contributing editor on security issues, and as you can hear so much more, Richard Falkenrath with the Chertoff Group.